Though most battles of the Civil War occurred on land, the Battle of Mobile Bay is perhaps the most famous and romanticized battle at sea. From the beginning, both sides recognized that the control of the seas would be crucial. President Lincoln ordered a blockade on southern ports. In response, the South relied on blockade running, described as the lifeline of the Confederacy, which was smuggling supplies to ports under the cover of night. By the summer of 1864, Mobile Bay was one of the few Confederate ports still available for blockade runners. Southern born Union Admiral David Farragut, who two years before had seized New Orleans and Galveston, began to prepare an attack on Mobile Bay. His fleet included 14 wooden gunships and four new technologically advanced ironclad monitors. His plan to take Mobile Bay was simple but risky. Mobile Bay was protected by two main forts, Fort Morgan and Fort Gaines, as well as the smaller Fort Powell. The forts were flawed in that their guns were unprotected against fire from the rear. Farragut intended to run his ships past the guns of Fort Morgan with the ironclads to the side of the cannons, shielding the wooden gunships. Not only would his fleet have to get by cannon fire, but he would also hope to avoid the many dangerous torpedoes, known as mines today, that were situated in the bay. Confederates had introduced the torpedo, which became very controversial, as they remained hidden below the water, which provoked complaints from the North that no civilized country would use an invisible weapon in war. But the South begged to differ. Once the fleet was in the bay, it would fight and destroy the small Confederate fleet of four, headed by Northern-born Admiral Franklin Buchanan. Buchanan was the only man in the entire Confederacy with the title of Admiral. Southern hopes of victory rested on one of the most heavily armored ironclads yet built, the CSS Tennessee. The Tennessee was a powerful ironclad ram and the South's secret weapon. She was accompanied by three gunboats, the Morgan, the Gaines, and the Selma. August 5th, 1864, dawned with a gentle haze that turned the sky milky white and the sea as smooth as glass. Farragut's plan was put into action. Very quickly, the Union's plan began to go wrong. The wooden gunships were faster than the ironclads and began to pass them. Leaving the wooden gunships exposed as the fleet was coming into the effective range of Fort Morgan's cannons. Just after this, the ironclad, the Tecumseh, thought to be unsinkable, hit a torpedo and almost immediately sank with the deaths of 93 men. For a terrible few minutes, the Union fleet was static in front of the firing guns of Fort Morgan and with the Confederate fleet firing at them from the bay. At this moment, Farragut entered into naval legend. In order to see over the smoke caused by all the gunfire, the elderly admiral climbed close to the top of the main mast and from his high position commanded his confused fleet until it was safely inside Mobile Bay. Legend has it that when Farragut was warned of mines ahead. He responded, Damn the torpedoes. Full speed ahead. Farragut's risk paid off. His fleet had broken through into the bay. The fate of the Confederate fleet was sealed and quickly dealt with. The Selma was overhauled and captured by the Union Metacomet. The Gaines was badly damaged forced to run herself aground to avoid sinking, and then burnt by her crew to avoid capture. Only the Morgan escaped, taking shelter under the guns of Fort Morgan, and then slipping through the Union fleet later that night. Now, the Tennessee reappeared on the scene. The Union fleet was back together, four miles inside the bay. However, four monitor ironclads were very slow compared to the Tennessee, if well handled. There was a chance that the Tennessee could do some serious damage to Union ships. She made directly for Farragut's ship, the Hartford. 
and came close to ramming her, but in the end, could only strike a glancing blow. The Tennessee was now exposed to gunfire of almost the entire Union fleet. She was encircled, rammed, and fired upon the 11-inch monitor guns like pocket pistols. With her steering gear destroyed, unable to turn, she could no longer direct her fire on any of the Union ships. Realizing this, Admiral Buchanan decided to surrender. Union victory in Mobile Bay sealed Mobile off from the outside world, ending its usefulness as a blockade running port. Total Confederate casualties were only 32, 12 dead and 20 wounded, although 280 crewmen from the Selma and Tennessee were captured. Union casualties were much higher, a total of 315, 145 dead, 170 wounded, and four captured. Fort Gaines later surrendered on the 7th of August. Fort Morgan held out longer. Although the city of Mobile itself remained in Confederate hands, her usefulness to the Confederacy ended on the 5th of August, 1864.